Hi, welcome to the Hannah G Knits podcast. I am Hannah G, and um, I am so glad you're here to watch my first podcast episode. I'm just glad you're here and watching. I um, have never done this before, and so it might be a little bit um, awkward or um, just a little disjointed because I am still getting used to this format of sharing my projects. But I um, have just been looking for more ways to connect with knitters and I love watching podcasts on YouTube. Um, so yeah, I wanted to share my projects with you. Um, I'll do more of a typical format, so finished objects, um, works in progress, acquisitions, things like that. Um, I won't have a lot of finished objects today because I didn't know if I should um, share all my finished objects ever or just like ones from this month or last week. So I have a few that I'll share. Um, and yeah, I'll jump in with my um, finished objects from this week. First one is, yes, it's still blocking and it's still wet. So it's this one. I just finished this one this week. It's my second sample. Um, for a project that I have been working on. So I do a little bit of designing um, for children's knitwear or like some garments, some hats, some bags. Um, I started doing that last year. It's been about like six months maybe um, after my son was born as a way to kind of connect um, with him um, while I was walking through some postpartum depression and anxiety so I wanted to knit for him and I just started with my own patterns because that felt like a good way to kind of express how much I loved him and um, yeah so anyway this is called Micah Satchel it's named after my sweet nephew um, Micah and anyway this is the one that's dry I finished this a while ago but it's um, just a cute little satchel for you know shells or toys or flowers and it's intended to kind of be like a crossbody so it has this little i-cord strap um flap you can add a buttonhole a lot of my testers did added like a little strap at the end for a button um i used to just like cotton linen yarn so for this one i used Saniscarn line so it's a worsted weight and then for the pink one i used drops bell um, and they're both linen cotton blends, um, so very sturdy, um, not going to pill or anything like that. Also antimicrobial, I recently learned. Um, so that's great for kids stuff because who knows what's going to go in here um, after I give it to Ollie, <laughs> after all the pictures are taken and everything. So this will be coming out in like two weeks. Um, I promise not all my knitted objects are um, self-promotion for my... Uh, patterns but this one is <laughs> but I just cast off the pink one last night I finally finished the i-cord um, and I thought it was going to be dry today for this but I forgot how long it takes cotton to dry <laughs> so it's pretty uh, it's pretty wet still so anyway that is my first finished object and now my second one um, it's a gift so Abby if you're watching this is a gift for my sister um, Abby, if you're watching, uh, skip ahead because I'm going to show um, your gift, which you know is coming, but you don't know what it is. Um, so my sister's birthday is coming up, and she asked for um, a pair of socks for her birthday. And, yeah, I um, really struggled with what to make her because... Um, she she also has a son so after she had her son she kind of changed up her style a little bit found some new colors she liked and so i want to kind of honor that and you know what she likes now and anyway i hope she likes these i don't know if she's going to but oh they're on my sock blocker that my dear friend um kim got me she's like uh my best friend since i was like five years old and um, we now live in the same like area. And so she's not a knitter, but um, she's a great gift buyer. And she got me these and they're custom. They say Hannah G Knits. And they're 
expandable so I could do like my husband's size, my sister's size, my size. Yeah, so very sweet. Um, I'll link the Etsy shop. And so I did the, um, no I can't remember, oh totally rad ribbed sock um, pattern. And I did the folded cuff option, the two stripe option, and the shorter ribbed option with the afterthought heel. Yes, those are what I did. The choices I made. So I've only done one sock. Um, one of my goals for 2022 was to be a better sock knitter. So I spent a lot of time researching, asking around what people did to enjoy sock knitting, um, what tools they used, and I found um, some things I love. I, I wanted to knit them two at a time, but that has not been going that well. <laughs> So usually I knit them two at a similar time. So I'll knit the cuff twice, then I'll knit this part twice, then I'll knit the foot or the sock so that they end up being the same because a lot of my issues stemmed from knitting socks months apart. Um, now this one, my other needles were busy, so I just have one. But I know I'm going to finish it because her birthday's in two weeks, three weeks, so I have to finish it. <laughs> um, and I used... Um, a Farmer's Daughter Fiber Sock Set Tweed um, that I got from someone's D-Stash. Um, it's non-superwash, which is important to my sister. And um, the contrast color, it's like a low contrast, but I really like it. Contrast color is um, something from my stash, so I'm not sure what it is. But it does have nylon in it because I just wanted it to be a little sturdier at the heel and the toe. Um, I hope Abby wears them a lot. She loves wool socks. She wears them like for hiking and all of that stuff. So hopefully these will um, fit her well and be what she's looking for. I've only gifted one other pair of socks um, to my dad and he's pretty like just loves all of my knitting stuff. So he would wear them even if they didn't fit, I'm sure. <laughs> so I'm nervous about these, but hopefully they will be the right fit. So technically it's not finished because there's only one, but I wanted to share it with you because I just found it off like two days ago and I kind of like how it turned out so now for my whips let's see I have my handy basket over here <laughs> um, okay so the first one um, that I want to share is this one the first one I want to share is this it's a very work in progress <laughs> it's just like the one triangle of the camisole number four um, I'm a little concerned it's turning out too big. I don't know. I'm knitting the smallest size just in case. Um, there's not a ton of size information, unfortunately, so I would say this pattern is not really size inclusive. There are quite a few sizes, but doesn't offer a schematic um, or even full yardage for all of the sizes. It just says like 100 grams, 150 grams. Um, but Yes, so if you're thinking about knitting it, just keep that in mind. Um, but I really like these patterns, and I had trouble finding a tank top pattern that I liked. Um, from It's from My Favorite Things Knitwear, and I really like all of her stuff. I would just make all of her things. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to find like some practical wardrobe staples, so I, I probably will wear this like um, over a t-shirt or something like that, just a cute summer top. I'm using this BC Garn Yarn Alba, 100% cotton, if you can see that. Um, I got it from my local yarn store um, this last week, actually. I think I went with my sister on Saturday, um, and yeah, it's 100% cotton, which I don't think I've knit a garment out of 100% cotton before. I knit a baby blanket, um, but not a garment. so. Yeah, the colorway is mustard, um, which is like the color I buy the most is I think mustard, but they all look different to me, honestly. Um, this one's a little bit darker and yeah, 100% cotton, 50 grams. Um, yeah, it's organic certified. Got, got global organic textile standard so I'd heard about this but it's actually like affordable for my budget I felt um, so I'm excited to see how this turns out and I definitely know 
Um, for me, this would be a lot less expensive than buying a new um, like knitted garment from the store. Um, and so I'm really excited. Not that I'm trying to like keep my costs down. That's not really the point. Um, because I wouldn't be knitting if I was. <laughs> but um, when I saw the cost of this and um, the pattern I had in mind, it felt like a really affordable option for me. So I'm excited about that. Um, this year I haven't been buying yarn for myself, not as like a strict rule, but just um, I have a lot of yarn in my stash. So I've been trying to be mindful of my purchases and most of the yarn I've bought has just been for gifts or for um, samples and I've been trying to buy a lot more yarn from people's D stashes because that's popular right now so why not buy it's not really secondhand it's just like unused but not necessarily new um, which has been fun to explore that see what other people have and yeah so I, bought, I did buy this for myself um, I don't have anything like it so when I was looking for a tank top yarn um, or camisole yarn didn't have anything so I got this I'm really happy with it hopefully it doesn't grow too much but I like the way it's turning out I think the pattern is beautiful I just wish that more people would be able to knit it um, yeah so I don't have any plans to finish this just whenever um, but yeah I, I'm hoping it will go fast since it's only this much yarn <laughs> Okay, so my next work in progress is, um, it is one of my designs. It is this little um, raglan crew neck sweater. It's called Ollie's Classic Crew. Um, so it's intended to be like a little sweatshirt um, that you can just throw over everything, wear all the time, like um, just your casual uh, fall kind of transitional season sweatshirt sweater. Um, yeah. So it has little garter stripes across the front and the back of the body, stockinette on the underarm, stockinette sleeves. It's going to have a little folded neckband. It does have short rows across the front or around, you know, to shape the neckline. Um, yeah. So anyway, I've been working on this design for a while. I had to re-knit the first sample because um, I added too much ease and I just wasn't happy with the the fit. Um, so now I'm much happier with this. I'm knitting the 18 month size for my son so he'll be a little older than that in the fall but he's um, a small guy <laughs> so he wears kind of like a, a lower size than what um, is recommended for the, the age. Um, yeah if you haven't knit one of my garment patterns or patterns in general I have a lot of sizes. Um, I don't think you should have to buy a bunch of patterns for your kids because they're going to grow so fast and then you have to buy another pattern and another pattern and, and a lot of times patterns um, for kids are gendered and so you feel like you have to buy two different ones um, and a lot of times that um, is great because they have fun details to knit but sometimes you just need a pattern that all of your kids can wear. <laughs> so all of my designs are um, genderless and um, uh, designed to fit from like baby to 10 years um, and after that is kind of when it goes into adult sizes so um, anyway yeah this is knit in Pearl Soho Goodwill they kindly sent it to me um, for this project uh, I am a Goodwill super fan I love it I have three full sweaters out of it um, all in pretty much the same color <laughs> but when I started knitting with it um, they just have five undyed colors, um, and I just like the neutral shades, um, anywhere from like brown to cream. And now they have these beautiful bright colors. So it's the same wool that I love, but they have all these fun colors. And so when I saw that they were releasing more colors, um, I decided I had to make um, a sweater out of them to just, I don't know, just so fun. So. Um, yeah, I wear a lot of like more neutral colors, but Ollie doesn't have to. He can wear whatever, and so I thought this orange was fun. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to have a tester call later um, later on, and Pearl Soho will have a, a discount code for testers if they wanted to use it. 
Um, yeah, I think this will come out in the fall. I'm not in a rush to release it because the majority of my followers are in the Northern Hemisphere, so we're experiencing summer. But um, yeah, I, I personally knit sweaters year round, but I know some people don't. They like to knit seasonally. So anyway, it'll probably be like um, maybe September release. Um, so test knitters in the next month or so once I can get it get the sample done um, and sent off so to my tech editor yeah so my next work in progress my next work in progress is a sweater for me it's the cumulus tee by petite knit and um, I'm knitting it in knitting for olive merino in dusty artichoke um, yeah, I like this pattern a lot. I've been trying to um, knit things that are going to be like a closet staple for me um, and something I can wear every year. This is a little bit of a departure in the color because this isn't my usual color. Um, the shape is very usual for me, <laughs> but the color is different um, and I love it. I really love it. Um, I do hope that I'll wear it. <laughs> But yeah, I really, I really am happy with the color and how it's turning out. And the shape and fit is a classic for me. I did, um, the Cumulus T has the short sleeves, Cumulus blouse has long sleeves. So I like a long sleeve more. Um, so I just lengthened it and they're about bracelet length. They're a little shorter. Um, but I am really happy with how they turned out. I just did more decreases and then, um, decreased um, on the last eye cord so it kind of balloons out but I really like it um, how it turned out I like the egg eye cord neckline lots of eye cord lately for me <laughs> um, I just have to finish the body I think I need about three more inches um, I definitely have enough yarn usually I play yarn chicken but I have like another one I think so I might make like a scrunchie or a bow or something or just stash it because um, I think this has been in my stash for a while it could be wrong but um, I like just having little random skeins around um, yeah I really like knitting for olive if you haven't used it I would try it it's like for my personal budget it's a little bit it's like moderately affordable like it's um, a good option for a nice garment for me um, it's great I think it's great for gifting too um, and they have all kinds of good standards that they use that I don't know what they mean but I've read about them on their website and um, it seems like they're doing really good things over there at Knitting for Olive and it's fun because it's like Ollie knitting for Ollie. Whenever I make something with him from this, it's like Oliver. Okay, so just a few more inches. That's my last work in progress. Um, usually I have a lot more, but I've been trying to um, just finish what's on my needles. Lastly, I have some acquisitions. <clears throat> well, just one acquisition. <laughs> So I said, I think I said earlier, I've been trying to be more mindful of my yarn purchases this year, um, which if you're not, that's totally fine. Spend your money, buy the yarn. It doesn't matter <laughs> to me. I just, um, for like our family and my, my personal spending and things like that, um, I have a lot of yarn in my stash. I'm not going to expose myself yet, but um, yeah, I got these from the Echo View Fiber Mill second sample. Second sale, second sale. Okay. Um, this is their lanyard bulky or just lanyard yarn. Um, I don't remember what it's made out of, but um, yeah, they have like a second sale where they just um, mark down a lot of their products that maybe aren't perfect. I don't know what's wrong with this. I guess I'll find out, but um, it technically it is a cone. I've never knit from a cone, although it's not the typical cone. <laughs> um, I don't know the colors because I just said I want the yellow and the white one. Um, but I'm planning to make either some placemats or a tablecloth um, for, or not a tablecloth, a table runner for our coffee table. Um, and yeah, I haven't used this yarn or a yarn like it before. 
but Echo View is a super cool place. Um, it's in my home state where, where I still live, North Carolina, and it's a fiber mill, and it's um, LEED Gold certified. I'm trying to think. Um, we visited last year, so about nine months ago, um, on my birthday, not related, but it was great. <laughs> um, it's in the mountains. It's about four or five hours away from where I live now. Um, so I couldn't go to the in-person sale, but then they had an online sale. So they have a great location in the mountains. It's beautiful. The shop is beautiful. The mill is beautiful. If you're anywhere near um, the mountains in North Carolina, Blue Ridge Parkway, you should go visit. Um, just check before you go if they're open. But everyone was so kind and we got to see the mill in action and I've never seen that before. This was my first time visiting a mill and seeing that and the gift shop and all of their sustainable practices and how they care for the earth. It was awesome. Definitely like eye-opening visit for me. And my mom came and my sister came. It was like a girl's, girl's excursion and we had a great time. Um, so can't wait to use this yarn. Hopefully put it on my coffee table. And um, yeah, this is all the acquisitions that I've had lately. Um, I did buy some yarn last week, but that was my works in progress. So yeah, I, um, I'm excited. This is my first podcast. And um, I think it was pretty short. I know a lot of podcasts are longer. I like the long ones, but some people like the short ones. So hopefully this was good for you. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know what you're working on or if you've ever knit anything I talked about. Um, if you live near me and you've been to Echo View, Echo View? Not sure how to pronounce it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm glad you're here. This is just an extension of me on Instagram and I also have a newsletter that you can sign up for. I'll put all the links on there, but I'm most active on Instagram. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Can't wait to see you probably next month, monthly. I think it's going to be monthly. Okay.